Hello everyone, my name is NS Meshwar Rao and I'm an educator at Anacademy. And you can follow me by downloading the Anacademy learning app where you can find rest of my courses. And today we'll be discussing about the thermodynamic relationships. Also, you can rate, you can review and you can also recommend this to your friends and you can also share this video. And you can also follow us on our YouTube channel where you can find lots of amazing videos and you can increase your knowledge base. So it'll be really helpful. So I'm looking forward to have a good discussion. So let's learn something today. Have a good day. Hello everyone and welcome back once again and today we'll be discussing the lesson 2 of the topic of the compressible flow. And in this lesson we'll be understanding what are the thermodynamic relationships. So in this we'll be understanding what is an isothermal process and what is an adiabatic process. But before we start I'd like to introduce myself. My name is NS Meshwar Rao and this is my being mechanical. And I'm currently working as a research assistant for a PhD scholar at IC. And in the past I worked as an intern at Titan Company Limited. My field of interest lies in thermal, fluid mechanics, synth of materials, design cons, aptitude and research. So to begin with, we will start with the introduction of the lesson called as the compressible flow. So a compressible flow is a flow in which the density of the fluid, it does not remain constant during the flow. Meaning the density will keep on varying. In all of our, uh, the previous chapters, we were considering the flow to be an incompressible in nature, meaning the density will not vary throughout. But in this lesson, we will be considering the compressible flow, meaning the density of the fluid will keep on varying due to the different reasons. And those reasons, it can be due to the, uh, the pressure or you can say due to the variation of the temperature. So these are a few reasons. So an incompressible flow is a flow in which the density of the fluid will remain constant throughout. So it will not vary at all. So, yeah, so uh, like basically the fluids are more, you know, like an incompressible type, but the gases are very much decompressible in nature. So in this, we will be focusing on the compressible properties and some of the examples of the compression of where, oh, sorry. So like uh, the, some of the examples where the uh, compression of the gas will take place is the gas flow, which will take place from the gas, which is stored in the cylinder. So in a cylinder, the gas will be stored at a very high pressure. So when the gas is let out of a cylinder, then there will be some amount of the uh, variation of the pressure. So meaning the uh, pressure of the gas inside the cylinder will be very high as compared to the gas which is coming out of the cylinder. So this is one very good example. And this, yeah, and the second example is the flow of gas in a pump or a compressor. So the basic function of the pump or a compressor is to pump the fluid so meaning it is giving it some more amount of pressure so that when the gas or the fluid is uh, like leaving the pump it has some more amount of the energy so when the gas is going inside the pump the gas will get compressed and when the gas is going out of the pump the gas will be released so there is a transition from the or you can say from uh, the more compression to the less compression so this is what happens in a pump and one more example is the gas which is flowing in a nozzle. So the basic function of a nozzle is to guide the air or you can say uh, if you might know that in a rocket, uh, see the best example is that. So in a rocket it will be having uh, like nozzles from which the gases will come out. So the gases will burn at a very high pressure and when it will come out it will get dispersed. So at the starting point where there is flame then at that particular point, the gas will be having very high pressure. But as we, yeah, so as we'll go, you know, like down, the gas will get spread. So as a result of that, there is like less amount of pressure in that. So this is like some of the very good examples of the compressible flow, which will take place. So in a compressible flow, basically that is the variation of the density of the fluid. And now we'll be discussing the equation of the state. So the equation of the state is defined as it is the equation which gives us the relationship between the pressure, the temperature and the specific volume of a gas. So for a perfect gas, the equation is given as PV is equal to RT, where P is the absolute pressure, meaning P is the sum of the gauge pressure plus, plus that of the atmospheric pressure. So P is equal to the absolute pressure and V is called as the specific volume and T is given as the absolute temperature, meaning in this we will be taking the temperature in the form of the Kelvin. 
so if the temperature is given in the form of the degree celsius to that we will be adding 273 and converting that into kelvin so t is the absolute temperature and r is given as the gas constant where the value of r is equal to 29.2 kg fm divided by kg k for the air so if we like multiply this into the form or you can say if we like want to represent this only in the form of the kg m divided by kg kelvin then what we'll do is that we will uh, multiply this whole part into 9.81 so we'll be getting the value as 287 so this is the value of the r which is the gas constant expansion and the compression of a perfect gas so the change in the pressure the density or the temperature is brought about by two process so these two are very important process so they are called as the isothermal process and the second one is called as the adiabatic process so in an isothermal process the temperature will remain constant so throughout the process there will be no variation in the temperature and this type of process is called as the isothermal process and an isothermal process the gas will obey the Boyle's law which is PV is equal to constant where P is the pressure and V is the specific volume so PV will be equal to constant and it will be following the Boyle's law and the second type is called as the adiabatic so in this if the compression or the expansion of the gas will take place without the transfer of heat from the body or from the surrounding so there is no interaction of the heat so this type of flow is called as the adiabatic and it is given by PV to the power of K is equal to constant where K is equal to the constant or you can say the specific heat at the constant pressure divided by the constant volume and the value of K is equal to CP divided by CV so where the CP is the constant pressure and CV is the constant volume and the value for air is equal to 1.4 so this is very important guys so if they give you air then you have to take the value of K to be equal to 1.4 also over here V is the specific volume and P is the pressure so PV to the power of K is equal to constant for an adiabatic flow and if the adiabatic process is uh, reversible in nature then it is called as an isentropic process so if this uh, you know what like if this uh, uh, this adiabatic process it can be reversed and it can be like brought back to its initial stage then uh, this type of process is called as the isentropic process and also if the value of k is not equal to cp divided by cv then we can say that the process is called as the polytropic process so if we don't get the value of k to be equal to cp divided by cv then it is called as the polytropic process so in this lesson what we have uh, you know like uh, like gone through is that for the perfect gas we are having this as the relationship which is PV is equal to RT over here we will take the value of T to be equal to 273 plus T and R value is given as 29.2 kgf or it can be equal to 287 joules per kg and we learn what is an isothermal process and it will obey the uh, it will obey the Boyle's law which is PV is equal to constant and the final one which we have learned is that and you know what uh, the adiabatic process which is PV to the power of K is equal to constant where the value of K is equal to CP, uh, CP divided by CV and that is equal to 1.4 so guys I hope that uh, you were you know like clear with the lessons and you had no doubt so if you had any doubt then uh, you can ask me so you can rate review and you can recommend this to friends and you can also follow me so in the end I would like to wish you luck and I wish you to have a very productive day Thank you.